another Rocket and Riesel episode. I'm Chris Phillips, the Assistant City Manager, and today we're at Tri-State Steel with one of our major sesquicentennial sponsors. We've got Steve Scott. Hey, Chris. Good to see you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you being here. Uh, why don't you start off and just tell us a little bit about Tri-State Steel. Your dad started this business. He did. So um, it was really exciting uh, to be involved with the Sesquicentennial. Centennial. Yep. Um, I've seen it spelled a number of times and I'm never going to spell it. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so while you're celebrating your 150th anniversary, and by the way, for a 150 year old, you're looking quite fine. Um, we are celebrating our 35th year here in Reedsville. And so that's kind of cool for us. Um, my father came here in 1988 to start Tri State Steel. And we started it on Tamco Road in our warehouse over there. And um, in 2020, I bought the company from the family and we've tried to continue his legacy. And we've been extremely busy, as, as everybody knows, um, Rockingham County, the city of Reedsville are growing, um, but so is the Carolina Corps, so is Southern Virginia. And we are, we are a supplier to the infrastructure of all those communities. And it's, a, it's an exciting time for us. We're, we're um, having a good time with it. it but we are growing really fast. So um, that does create some unique uh, problems, as you right. know. So you guys have done an expansion over there at your main facility. We have, uh, correct. To try to keep up with, with uh, the need. Yep. And you've also uh, created this space that we're in today. Yeah, so this is, this is our new retail store. Um, matter of fact, we had the ribbon cutting yesterday, so uh, a lot of the city of Reedsville folks were there. Yeah, the city nice of Reedsville day. was, it was a nice day. The weather helped, so that's yeah. always good. Um, the city of Reedsville and Tri-State Steel have had a really long and super positive history together. Um, way back, um, you know, James Festerman's always been one of my favorite people because I, he's been there with us for all 35 years, right? Yeah. And, uh, and I couldn't be on something about Reedsville without mentioning Chief or he would come right. get me later. So well, he, he's been around 150 years. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so yesterday was our ribbon cutting. It was a really great event. And there were so many people from the city of Reedsville here um, from summer to the police chief and it seemed like everybody in between. And, and that was a very humbling for us. But I will also say that the city was super helpful to us in making this happen. Um, I, as I said, I bought the company three years ago and in the three years that I've bought it, I've been looking and looking and looking. And we haven't had a lot of success finding an opportunity. And this building came available. Right. And I immediately reached out to the city and said, I'd like to do this and everybody jumped on board with me like it was just it was a very rewarding thing and it, it, and so y'all cut through a lot of red tape for us and and made it possible for us to do what we wanted to do well, so it was exciting i think what you're talking about is it, it's hard to explain what team reasonable means but that's what you're talking about is being part of the community we we want to work with everybody and, and figure out what you need and how we can get to it as quick as possible because the sooner you open the sooner you're here uh, making sales and, and serving customers. But I think something your dad learned early and, and I know he's passed on to you through the company is it's not about selling the product. You have a quality product and people need it, they'll buy it, but it's the customer transaction and customer service. And you're competing with everybody on customer service. Without question. And, you know, being part of the community is another piece of that. It is. Um, you know, Marcus Lemonis is fa a famous business person and, and he says there are three things that you can offer. You can offer process you can offer product and you can offer people and you have to be good at all three of those things right and my dad he was a bit of a curmudgeon he really was but at the same time he had a heart of gold and he understood the people part and he he really jammed that down my throat and said you have to invest in your people by investing in your people it wasn't just about our employees although we we work really hard to be a great place to work right. um but it's also the people in your community. It's also your customers. The people part of it is wildly important. And we always tell people we deliver metal, but we sell service. Right. We are in the service business and, and that really matters. And that's why we're here, honestly. I that's why this building happened. Some businesses never figured that out. It's no matter how good a product you have, you, you'll kill yourself if you're not 
uh, serving those customers. It wasn't a choice at our house. <laughs> you know, um, it was it was part of of my dad was an old salesman, old steel salesman from the '60s, and and those deals were were made over dinner right. and cocktails and and the relationship. And so now we have to take that to a new era. You know, it's not it's not okay to do those kinds of things so much anymore. Right. But we still have to engage in the um, in the relationship, right. and so we try really hard to do that, and we work really hard with the city, and the city works really hard with us, and um, and it's been a really healthy relationship for many many years, and right. and we're we're glad for it. So uh, this location where we're at uh, uh, is right down Richardson uh, Avenue, 158, right, kind of hidden out of town. So you're here on on the left, um, uh, you know, easy to find. Uh, yeah. if you come down here, you'll see it. But why would just the average guy sitting at home need to come to a retail metal shop? Well, we hope that there's a ton of demand for it. The reason we had to build this was that there's so much demand um, for everything across town that we no longer, we no longer, thanks Charles, we no longer could, um, get the person who needed this piece of metal right because we were so busy sending out our 12 trucks every day working 24 hours running overhead cranes moving forklifts around that it was dangerous right. and so the fella or the lady who needed to get a piece of metal or a smaller piece of metal or we have it in full lengths here too yeah. um they couldn't do that across town we literally had to say we can't help you and that is not what I was raised to do and that's not what Tri-State Steel was raised to do and when this building um, became available at the intersection of uh, Reed School Road and and um, Richardson Drive or 158 right. we jumped on the opportunity but there were a lot of hurdles we had to get over and y'all were super helpful in making that happen um, but we were we're just super pleased about the opportunity to be here and it's so exciting a piece like this yeah. You got a little trailer for a rusted spot. Sure, absolutely. So this is aluminum and it's mostly decorative, right? Um, but this is on the front of your utility trailer, let's say. If you look at a covered utility trailer, it's always got that aluminum sheeting right. on the front. It's for us. Um, we have a whole wall of it back there that we're, we're real proud of. Yeah, um, nice. And um, this is square tubing. But I will tell you that we had a lady come down Saturday from two hours, almost two and a half hours away from Elliston, Virginia. And she's a blacksmith and she couldn't find the items she wanted cut to the length she wanted anywhere close by. And her brother lives in Roxboro and he saw something about us yeah. and he ended up calling her and saying, hey, I think these people in Reedsville can help you. And she came down and she had, I don't know, 30 or 40 different pieces that she wanted cut into all these different shapes. She's a software engineer who does blacksmithing on the side. Well, I guess forging is becoming more of a hobby. Yeah. And the exact thing you need. Right. So when we built this, um, when we built this facility, uh, we thought that it would be people in maybe a 20 mile radius who, who needed those kinds of services. And what we're finding out is it's a much bigger draw than that. Um, we had people um, from Davie County come yesterday to pick up some stuff that they had heard about. So it's, it's really exciting for us because we weren't sure exactly what to expect. Right. And, um, and we've been running that little saw over there uh, really nonstop since the, since the, day, we, the day we opened up. And uh, as you can see, there's other stuff lined up ready to be cut right. as soon as y'all leave. So it's well, exciting. And I know anybody who's had a wooden closet uh, rack break or something, right. This metal pole's not going to break. It's, it, it's not, up. yeah, it's not going anywhere. And, and we have found that um, we've got a lot of, um, we've got a lot of guys in the racing industry in our area. So this is a piece of sheet metal. You tear it up on Saturday, you've got to replace your sheet metal on the front of your car. Right. So we've got, we've had a lot of guys come in and ask us, hey, can you shear up a piece of 20 gauge sheet metal to, for me to put on my car? Sure. Do it right now. And they're just so excited about that. And so the excitement part of it's fun for us. I got one more question. Mm -hmm. I bet you've been asked a lot of times. Sure. Is 
you know, you must be a huge Steelers fan. You <laughs> stole their logo. We do get that question a lot, and it's a great story. Um, so the logo on the side of the Steelers helmet is what we call the three star logo. It's not even actually a star. It's a sh an odd shaped diamond to be right. honest with it. It's got a special name. I, don't, I can't remember what it's called, but it is actually the logo of the International Steel Group. And it is not the logo of the Steelers. They used it in 1969 or 68 when they stunk and they were terrible and they had no money. And, and Mr. Rooney, the owner, wanted to do something to honor the steel workers. And so he took that logo right. and he put it on one side of their helmet because they didn't want to put it on both because they were, didn't have any money. Right. They never won. They won that game. And ever since then, they've used that logo. And they're the only team in the NFL that has that logo on one side of their helmet. Now they added the word Steelers in there. Everybody else, it's steel. The steel is non-registered. If you add the ERS to Steelers, then it's a registered trademark of the Steelers. So that's the, thing, that's the history behind it. So they stole it. You didn't steal it. It's not even stealable <laughs> because it's not a registered trademark, right? right. But, they, but they do recognize how important the steel industry is to the world's economy. Right. And specifically at the time in the 60s, Pittsburgh, everything was steel. Right. And... Um, and they recognized, back to the people conversation, right? They recognized how important people are. Yeah. And Art Rooney Sr., who owned the team back then, it's now gone through three or four more generations, you, they called him the chief. And the chief is also what I called my dad. And um, he was a huge Art Rooney Sr. fan. And the chief said, business is about people. And he has a great book about managing people um, that was written years and years ago, and and it's he used to go to the lunchroom that the Steelers organization was in and speak to every single person in the organization, from the janitor to the quarterback and all the coaches in between, because he said it's about people, it's about right. a personal relationship, a right? A whole team. Yeah, and and I think you know what you said about Team Reedsville, you know it's it's a real thing. You, but it's a real thing on a two-way street, Chris. Y'all can do all you want, but if I'm not participating with you, that's not what a team's about. It's not about just me saying, hey, city, give me, give me, give me. It's about, hey, city, I need your help. And oh, by the way, I want to help you too yeah. so that we can grow together. And I, I think sometimes we forget that, right. and it's important. So I'm, I, Tri-State Steel, the employees of Tri-State Steel, my family, we're incredibly grateful for what the city of Reedsville has done for us over the last 35 years. So it's an honor to be a part of the, well, uh, the Sesquil ses Centennial. We're glad you guys found Reedsville. Your dad found Reedsville back then, and we're glad to have you here. It's, it's businesses like this one. Uh, you know, it's got, it's got a fair number of employees, but uh, it's these family-owned businesses and employee folks that make up Team Reedsville and uh, make up the backbone of any community. So glad to have you. Glad we could come here today. and. You know, you need one of these, this is where you come to get it. That's right. right. We sure do appreciate it. Thank you all so much. Thank you. All right.